Hey everybody. With the sudden unplanned change that we've all made to homeschooling in the last few weeks, we at Raspberry Pi understand that it might be a little bit daunting for you to get your kids involved in coding at home. So this video is a short primer on how to get your young ones set up on Scratch, a really nice beginner interface for doing some coding, and how to have a look at the Raspberry Pi Projects website to get some great ideas for them to do stuff at home. So you see here, this is the Raspberry Pi Projects website, and you can get here by going to projects.raspberrypi.org. We have a list here of all of our projects, and you can see that if you're lucky enough to have specialized hardware at home, like a Raspberry Pi, a camera, or other things, then you can choose these in the menu here in order to get specified projects. If you don't have those, that's absolutely fine. Most of our projects require nothing more than a laptop and a Wi-Fi connection. So you can see here we're about to do Scratch. So if I choose Scratch from the drop-down menu, it limits me to all of the projects in which I can use the Scratch interface for my young folks. Clicking on any one of these projects will take you through to the instructions, which are laid out sequentially with tick boxes to allow your young people to work out how far the project has progressed. To get to Scratch, simply go to scratch.mit.edu and it will load up this colorful splash page for you. Now, if you're in a hurry and you just want to get creating, you can do that by clicking here. You can also join and create an account. The benefits of having an account means that you can save your work on the cloud and access it from anywhere you have an internet connection. But you don't need an account to start making cool stuff. You can also download the, online, the offline editor by clicking download and choosing your operating system. But in order to make cool stuff, we're just going to click create and it should open up a brand new project page for us. You'll see that we have this tutorial window here, which you can just close if you don't need. But if you're a first timer, it might be nice to follow through all those different pieces and work out what Scratch actually does. Now, Scratch is here and it has these four different parts of the screen. You'll see on my left, I have these menus with the different kinds of blocks that I can use, which are all laid out by different color. And the instructions we have on our website are also in the same colors. So you can see the code here and simply copy it into your Scratch project. These blocks from the palette drag across to the workspace. And once you've released the block onto the workspace, this code will now be active on the sprite that you have selected. We know which sprite is selected because it shows us in the top corner here with the icon. Now, if I drag a few more blocks across, which I'm now attaching to the little cat in my screen, I can have my cat do whatever I would like as soon as I click the green flag. Now you'll see here is my code and here is my stage. This is where my code will play out once I ask it to start. So if I have my code here, which says when I click the green flag, I want to 10 times for my cat to turn 15 degrees. You'll see here I click go and my cat does what I ask it to do. This is how Scratch works at a very basic, basic level. Now, you can do other things in Scratch, and by joining Scratch, you open a new account, which allows you to save your work online, but it's not absolutely necessary. Having an online account also means that you can share your work to other young people and to the Raspberry Pi and Scratch communities as well. This is a really nice bonus for young people to be able to get kudos and support for their work, as well as honest and genuine feedback. Thanks for watching, and remember to stay home, stay safe, and keep making cool stuff.